In this video, I'll take a look at automations and scripts, groups and scenes. I'll cover the key similarities and differences, show various real-world examples and use cases, including how these different options can be combined to make complex actions easier to create and maintain in Home Assistant. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now the idea for this video came from a discussion I was having in Discord with Dave, a relatively new Home Assistant user. Now like most users, he'd already created a number of automations in Home Assistant, but didn't quite understand the differences between automations and scripts and when you might use one over the other. He then mentioned he also didn't quite understand the use cases for things like groups and scenes. So I'm going to try to cover both topics today, but like most things in Home Assistant, there are often multiple ways to accomplish the same task. So while I'll show some common use cases, note that there may be some advanced situations or particular corner use cases where what I show might not apply. Let's get started by discussing automations and scripts since most newer Home Assistant users will at least create a few automations. We take a look at the automation builder. There are three sections, a trigger or a win section that says when something happens, an optional section of conditions so that when something happens and these conditions are true, then do something, run an action or a series of actions. So for example, when motion is detected, then turn on the light or when motion is detected and the sun is set, then turn on the light. If we look at the script builder, there's only a sequence section where we can add one or more actions. Actually, if you just look at the then do section of the automation, it is the same as the sequence section of the script. In fact, the builder section of the actions of an automation and the sequence of a script are identical. So an automation is automatically executed in response to some event or trigger, but a script doesn't have a trigger. So the actions under a script must be manually or explicitly executed. Where then might you use a script instead of an automation? Here's my Home Assistant dashboard for my basement matrix. This has multiple modes, and when I switch from one mode to the other, a number of actions need to occur. Not only does the display change, but things like color, brightness, and a number of helper values are set. These are all placed in a script because I never want the matrix to automatically change modes based on an outside event or a trigger, only when I manually click the buttons. But you might be thinking that you could still create this as an automation and use the state change of the button or switch as a trigger, right? Well, yes, you could, but hold that thought. Now, here's a sample of my home theater dashboard. If I want to do something like watch YouTube TV by clicking a button, as you can imagine, a long list of actions potentially need to occur. Turn on the TV, turn on the AV receiver and set it to the proper input, and then send the commands to the Roku to launch the YouTube TV app. I may also want to do other things like lower the lights. Again, this is a manual action, so all the actions can be placed in a script. But in addition to clicking a button on a dashboard that calls a script, I do have an NFC card reader that can also launch something like YouTube TV. And this does need to be an automation because it is triggered by a scan of the card. So now I have both an automation with a trigger and a manual method or a script that both need to run the same set of actions. Do I just create an automation and a script and duplicate the same actions in both? Well, that would work, but a better method is to create one set of actions in a script and then have the automation call and execute that script. I now have only one set of actions to maintain and should a change be needed in the actions, such as replacing the TV that would require a different set of actions to turn it on, or maybe I rearrange my HDMI inputs. I only have to make those changes in one location here in the script, as opposed to locating all the different automations that might have used those same actions. This is the best of both worlds as the actions can be launched manually via something like a dashboard button or called as part of multiple different automations. Here's another common example. I have multiple automations that make voice announcements for things like the washer, dryer, mail delivery, and numerous others. Obviously, each of these are going to have a different trigger or event that starts the automation, but all are going to have actions to make an announcement on one or more speakers. Instead of repeating the same actions over and over in each automation, I can create a single script. But notice that for this script, I've added a field. Fields are like variables or parameters that can receive data when the script is called. I then have my sequence where I'm calling a text-to-speech service, specifying the device or devices to use, and then using the field or data passed in as the actual message to play. Now in the action or the then do section of the automations, I can simply call this script, passing in a different sentence to announce via the message field. 
Note that each automation may have other actions specific to that automation, such as the 3D print finishing, changing the LED colors on the printer, or the garage door opening, turning on a light, but each one is calling the same script for the voice portion. With using a single script like this, if I need to make changes down the road, say I add or remove a speaker or change the type of text-to-speech service I'm using, I only have to change it in one location for it to update all my voice notifications instead of having to remember all the various automations that have voice announcements and updating the action section of each. Now, another way I could have also handled the removal or addition of speakers in the script is by creating a speaker group, but I'm going to cover groups and scenes in just a minute. But one more thing about scripts. Recall that I mentioned that the action or the then do section of automations was basically the same as the sequence section of scripts. And as we just saw, you can call a script from an automation, but you can also call a script from a script. Yes, a script can call another script as part of its sequence or action steps. On a dashboard like the sample I've created here where I put some random automations into an entity's card and some random scripts into another entity's card, you can also see a difference between automations and scripts. If I toggle an automation from off to on, it doesn't actually fire off the automation or run any of the automation actions. The toggle simply enables or disables the automation. If disabled, the automation simply will not run even if its trigger condition is met. Scripts, on the other hand, are shown with a run button. Clicking run will immediately execute all actions defined in the script sequence. So an entity's card is one way to manually execute a script from a dashboard, but there are others, like the custom button card, which can also call a script or service as an action when the button is clicked. Or you could even create a templated switch that allows you to run a different script when the switch is turned on and off, and then you can show that switch on your dashboard. So I hope that maybe that covers some of the differences between automations and scripts. Just remember that automations are always started by a trigger or some event, while scripts do not have triggers and therefore must be called and executed manually from either another automation, script, or through a dashboard control. I briefly mentioned groups when I was talking about some of those voice notification scripts. So now let's move on to the second part of this video and talk about groups and scenes. Now groups and scenes aren't nearly as closely related as automations and scripts. In fact, they're not even created in the same spot underneath your home assistant settings. Scenes, as you might guess, are found underneath automation and scenes, which is the same place where we have our automations and our scripts. Groups, however, are considered a helper, so you'll find those under device and services and helpers. Let's start out talking about groups. Groups simply allow you to take multiple entities of the same type, like lights or switches, and group them together to create a new single entity that controls all of the group members. As an example, I have six smart bulbs installed in the TV area of my basement. If I want to turn all the lamps off or on, I have to toggle each one individually. Now, I could create an automation or script like I covered earlier that would turn each lamp off or on, but then I have to create an individual action for each lamp. But if I put these six lamps into a group, I now have a single entity that can control all of the lamps. And what's more, if all the entities in a group support it, I can still do things like control color or brightness for the entire group through this one entity. And all this is done without any automations or scripts. Yet I still have individual control of the lamps if I need it or desire it. One more thing before I cover how to actually create groups. An entity can be a member of more than one group. Here I have three individual WLED controllers for my bar lights, so each one can be controlled individually. Now, before you fire off a comment, this install was done well before WLED segments existed. But since WLED integrations contain a light entity, you can put those light entities into a group and control them just like a single light. Now, this isn't quite the same as syncing WLED controllers. And if you want to know more about WLED segments and syncing controllers, I have another video you can check out after this one. But just like the lamps I showed before, I can control the WLED lights individually or as a group. But these lights are also members of a larger group that includes 13 different WLED installs in the basement. Toggling this turns on all the various WLED lights, including those three bar installs. So the bar lights are members of both the bar LED group and the all basement LED group. In fact, I could have added the bar LED group to the all basement group instead of the individual WLED light entities. So individual entities can be members of multiple groups and groups can even contain other groups. Creating a group is extremely easy. Since the group is considered a helper, we go to Devices and Services, the Helper tab, Create Helper, and select Group. 
And here we see a couple of restrictions for groups. First, not every possible type of entity can be grouped, but those that currently can are shown here. Next, all entities in a group must be of the same type. You can't, for example, create a group that contains a light, a sensor, and a switch. I'm going to select light here since that's probably one of the most common ones used, but groups of other entity types are created in the same way. So I simply need to give my group a name. In this case, I'm going to group my kitchen lights together. Now realize this is actually going to create an entity, in this case, a light entity, a light.allkitchenlight. So I'll get a new light entity in Home Assistant. If you're creating something like a switch group, you get a new switch entity. Now I just need to include all of the lights that I want to be part of this group. So I actually have main overhead kitchen lights, and then I have four separate controllers for my cabinet lighting. I've now added all of the entities for this particular group. Notice that there is a slider down here for hide members. If you hide your members, that means that these entities that are members won't automatically show up on a dashboard. They also won't be advertised to any kind of smart speaker like Google or Amazon. So if you always want to control things by the group and not individually, you may want to go ahead and hide those members. I'm going to leave them exposed and I'm going to go ahead and click submit. As you can now see, I have a new light entity called All Kitchen Lights. This can be used just like any other light entity by putting it on a dashboard or using it in your automations and scripts. But there is one other option I want to talk about when it comes to groups. By default, for most group types like lights, switches, and binary sensors, the group entity is on if any one of the member entities is on. We want to change this behavior so that the group entity is on only if all members of the group are on, we need to edit the group. We go back to our helpers, find our All Kitchen Lights group, come over here and show the settings. There's now an option for group options. If we select that, there's now a slider for all entities. If we turn that on, now the group will only be on if all of the member entities are on. This is how I have my bar LED set up. Recall that these three bar LED controllers are part of my all bar LED group. But when I turn one individual member on here, notice that the group does not turn on. I actually have to have all three members turned on before the group entity shows as on. Finally, let's briefly cover scenes. In a nutshell, scenes allow you to save the state of a number of entities and then have all those entities return to that state when you activate or turn on the scene. Scenes are created on the same page as automations and scripts. We're going to scenes and we're going to add a scene. Just for an example here, I'm going to create a scene called movie night. I can optionally add an icon and an area. This is actually going to be for my basement. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. Now I just need to add all the devices or entities or both that I want involved in this scene. So I've gone ahead and I've added all the entities that I want involved in this scene. I have a switch that when turned on is going to start the home theater system and launch Netflix. I have my overhead basement lights. I have those six different lamps that I showed earlier that I put into a group. I have my 13 different WLED displays also put into a group. And here at the bottom, I'm going to use this as a make believe blinds. I don't have any windows down here, so I don't have any blinds, but we'll just act like that is a set of automated blinds. Now that I have the entities, I need to go into each of these entities and actually put them in the state I want for this scene. As soon as I click the save button, it's going to save the current state of all of these. And that's what's going to be returned to when I activate the scene. So for my switch, I want to open that up. I want this switch to be on. For my basement lights, I want to lower my base, basement lights down to say 50%. So I'll go ahead and set that. For my basement lamps, I can either make sure they're all, if I want them all off, I can leave it in this state, but maybe I want to turn those on and maybe set them to a, bright, a low brightness level. We'll just say something here around 35% in a nice pink color, but I can make that color anything that I want. For my LED displays, I can turn them all off, but notice that since I have the individual options here, I can actually turn particular ones on. Maybe I'll go ahead and have the bar lights turned on in case someone needs to get a refreshment during the movie. And finally, my simulated blinds here, I want to make sure that those blinds are closed. So now when I save this, it's going to save that current state of all these entities. You can then add your scenes to a dashboard and simply have an activate button to activate that scene and restore all of those entities back to the state that they were when you saved it. And of course, you can use other types of dashboard controls, anything that can call a service. And naturally, you can also activate these scenes from automations and scripts.
So as you can tell, there are often multiple ways to accomplish the same task in Home Assistant. While I can create a scene to save the state of a number of entities and easily return to that state by activating the scene, I could have also just created a script that would have set the state of all those entities. Or I could create it as an automation and use the state of some other entity or an event to actually activate the scene or run that script. I can create groups that make it easy to create a single control on a dashboard to control multiple entities and can also make it easier to maintain those entities in your automations and scripts. As with most things Home Assistant, the flexibility provides a lot of ways to accomplish what's best in your particular situation. But hopefully I've shown some of the key similarities and differences today between automations, scripts, scenes, and groups. And until next time, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.